Welcome to episode 3 of the BMW GS project and today we're going to get into the rocker covers starting off by removing the plastic casing and using this little tool to pull out the coil pack. On first inspection then it looks pretty clean to be fair, I'm quite happy with the condition of it. But despite that it'll still get a bit of a clean up before it goes back into the casing. Looking inside you can see the contacts are still clean as well so again really happy with the coil pack. And now that can be stowed out of the way so that I can crack on and take off the rocker cover. Moving on to removing the spark plug then. I'm using the tool that was supplied with the bike. This thing was under the seat. It's a spot on fit in all fairness you know it is made for the job. I did try and buy a 14mm thin wall socket specifically for this and the, the reviews said it actually worked as well but uh, I couldn't get a bite with it. The only thing it was actually good for was pulling the spark plug out later on after I took the rocket cover off because this thing even though it was loose I couldn't pull the spark plug out. So once I'd given up on trying to pull the spark plug out with that little tool I just went on to removing the bolts for the rock cover. Just need a six millimeter allen socket for this. Now don't remove it the way I removed it, for some reason I just done one side and then went on to the left. I never really do that kind of thing, but you're supposed to remove one corner, then go to the opposite corner, and then back across, and then back down to the opposite corner. So once the screws are undone then I just sort of set up the oil pan and give a little bit of a gentle pull on the rock cover. It came off dead easy thankfully. Uh, there was some oil that came out. Naturally you can't drain all the oil out of every part of the engine. Some settles. And as you can see it's in the bottom left hand corner there. Just that little bit. Thankfully it'll all come out and I'll clean it before I put it back on. And with the casing off then I could just check the valve, see if there's any free play in the rocker arms or in the valve screws themselves. But thankfully everything seems to be really tight in this. So again, one last bit of an inspection with a torch just to see, make sure there's no sort of iron filings. Anything that looks dodgy or out of the blue that shouldn't be there. Fortunately everything's good, there's no iron filings or anything weird in there. So I'll just use the opportunity now to try and pull that spark plug out using the socket that I tried removing the spark plug with originally. Now this is where I tried to show you what the spark plug looks like and to be fair it does look pretty good but obviously the camera didn't focus so you'll just have to take my word for it. So if you're going to play along in this section and you want to get into this and this which are your push rods you're going to have to undo this torque screw, this torque screw this torque screw, this bolt, this bolt, this allen screw, and this allen screw. So now it's time to start delving in a bit deeper then and having a nose to see what these push rods are like. It's probably worth saying at this point that if you plan on doing your valve clearance and you haven't checked your push rods, get in there and have a look anyway just to make sure because the push rods are made of three parts. There's an aluminium sleeve and two metal end caps and as they work loose over time, they could end up pushing the rocker out a bit further than they normally are and then that will give you a false reading when you're trying to set your valve clearances.
Now when you remove this part of the assembly, just take a few minutes to have a look, to see what kind of state it is in. Obviously it's got heavy working parts in there. You just check in to make sure everything is smooth and not worn. Now these screws are what hold the rocker arm shafts in place. Once you remove them, you'll be able to look down where the screw came out of and see there's a slight groove for the shaft. And in fact, when you take the shaft off, you'll be able to see the groove itself. When you're replacing them, just ensure that groove is facing inwards. Otherwise, you can have a bit of a nightmare pulling those screws back in. And there you are then, that's the moment we've been waiting for. The first push rod is free. Now that we got them out of the bike, then you can see the difference between the old ones and the new ones. The ones on the left are made of the three pieces, the ones on the right are the brand new ones are all one piece. The second push rod from the left, if you look at the bottom of it, the cap is starting to come away from the aluminium body, which then starts to cause the tap 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 noise that people get really frustrated with. Now before I go jumping straight into starting putting the screws back in and talking everything up, I thought I'd just put this picture up and add the torque specs for anybody that needs them. Just want to note that there are two bolts there, one at the far left and one at the bottom that I haven't tightened up and I'll explain about that at the end of the video. So you'll notice now I'm starting to do things very lightly, putting things in by hand and then tightening them up or using the Allen wrench slowly to put them back in. The reason for that is I don't want to over torque. 9 newton meters is not a lot so it's best to just tighten them up only slightly and then use the torque wrench to take them in for the rest of the way.
as you may have noticed then, I didn't set the torque on the bolt underneath the right rocker arm. And the reason for that is, it needs to be set to its normal specifications and then cranked another 90 degrees. That is measured using a torque angle gauge and I don't have one, but one is on the way. So what I'm going to do is in the next video, which is where I'm doing the valve clearances, I'll open the video showing you how I torque that bolt and then use the torque angle gauge just to crank it and get it correct. Because I'm not going to sort of start cutting corners after doing the work that I'm doing to the bike. But as for the push rods, there was only one dodgy one, one that had a little bit of a rattle. The other three were fine, but I just figured it's peace of mind for me in the future. If I go out on a ride and something starts rattling, I should know that it's not going to be these. So it gives me a direction that I can go in. And it's obviously a peace of mind for future owners of this bike as well, knowing that they've been changed. But that brings this episode to an end. Thank you very much for watching.